Can you avoid the expense of an extended warranty on a used car? Yes. Make it a policy to never buy a used car without a proper vehicle inspection by your mechanic. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as The Homer Guy and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? Welcome to YouTube's best channel on the subject of smart car buying. Today, I'm taking a 2004 Mercury Grand Marquis to a great mechanic on behalf of a car buyer. On this trip, you're going to see how many details a mechanic covers that most of you would never know how to do or lack the tools to do, and that's why you're wasting big bucks on an extended warranty. Meet Ruben Byman, owner of Longview Auto and Tire. Take a picture of the dash with the car running so I get a picture of any warning lights on and the mileage. And we'll go out and drive it. So we're going to go out and test drive this guy, listen for wheel bearing noises, suspension rattles, creaks, groans anything that might um you might be able to hear or notice on a test drive great mechanics make a living driving and working on cars it always makes sense for them to take it for a test drive and then go through all the functions in the vehicle ruben's going to take this opportunity to test all the windows the air conditioning the heat the radio the horn everything inside the vehicle will get a functional test during this test drive one of the things he'll do would be to accelerate hard to see how the vehicle shifts and then also to brake hard and check if there's any distortion or things going on with the brake system. As we're getting to the end of the test drive, Ruben senses something in the steering. There's a very slight wander in the front end of this. Nothing bad, nothing scary, but we may end up finding it loose. If you're a first timer on the Homework Guy channel, consider subscribing and leaving us a comment below. Add hashtag the Homework Guy if you'd like a response directly from Kevin or one of the Homework Guy staff members. We're always glad to help our loyal followers, and the best part is there's no charge. You can also email the team at infothehomeworkguy.com with a specific question, or if you'd like a free contract review, just black out your personal information and send it to us. We'd love to hear from you. Just be aware that we do get a lot of requests, so just be patient while you wait for a response. Back to you, Kevin. The car is back in the shop now, and we're going to take a look under the hood. And that's a good brand. I'll grab a tester and test it here just a So the battery tests 670 cold cranking amps. Okay, there we go. And it's rated for 675, so it's checking good. Looked like somebody went through and cleaned this thing up. Yeah, they cleaned the top, but they didn't do that. There's still lots of dirt on the engine, which is good because now it gives you an indication of what it's really like. Um, you know, a little oil residue. It's got a new intake manifold on it, I think. So the aluminum's newer here. It's shiny and not shiny. Mm -hmm. And the bolts have been out. It's real common on these to have intake manifold this plastic uh, rot out and start deteriorating and leaking water. So then you got to replace the whole intake manifold assembly. So with new intake manifold, that means you've got new coolant, which is a good thing. I don't know if you can get a picture of that, but wouldn't hurt yep. to service a power steering that's kind of muddy looking, a muddy looking red. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the brake fluid. You can see how dirty that is. Uh, if you service the brake fluid, you have a lot less um, calipers hanging up less power or ABS pump issues. The air cleaner's been in there a little while, but it's not dirty, or not too dirty. Just normal. And you can tell the dealer didn't just change that, somebody did before he got the car. Mm-hmm. 
transmission fluid. It smells fine and it's, it looks, it wasn't recently serviced, but it's been serviced in its life. It's, it's not black. So it's the color of the fluid you're looking for there. Yeah. Yep. It, you know, it's not brand new, but it's, fresh engine oil. And it's full. One thing I noticed is it looks like that oil filter's been on there for a little while, not like it was just put on at the dealership. Mm -hmm. So more than likely the customer changes change the oil before they traded it in. They got coils on each of the plugs. There's a coil for every spark plug, and that's the one of the most common misfire failures is a coil failing. These look like original coils on the car. You might consider buying a set of eight new coils, put them on, and then save these as spares if they ever start getting any problems. It's got genuine Motorcraft spark plugs in them. I would guess they've never been changed, but being a big motor and a smaller car, they haven't been working that hard, but you can see the wear in there. See how it kind of curves uphill? Mm -hmm. A 40,000 mile spark plug won't do that. These will generally go 100,000. So if I was buying this car, I'd plan on putting at least spark plugs and the coil boots in. I would buy an extra coil and put it in my glove box. The uh, rear body panel for the price of the car, I'm not worried about it being repainted previously. We don't know what damage was there, but from the backside, it didn't look like anything too shady. much play in them yet, but there is a little bit of play. This is the problem Ruben alluded to on the test drive. There was a little bit of play in the front end of the vehicle while driving it. Something a skilled hand on the steering wheel can tell. You can hear the clump. Those are, that's what we were feeling driving it. A little bit of play in the front. It's the ball joints just moving around. standard for this old of a car. You can do a polish on there, um, but it seems to last about a year or less and you gotta do it again and again. Turn the hazards off. They're on top of the steering wheel. And then um, turn the key on and put it in reverse. work. Excellent. All right, let's go up here on this guy. So on the test drive we got, we checked heater and air conditioning operation. They seem to work normal. Windows, they all go up and down. I didn't pull them all up and down, but I want just a little ways to make sure, you know, they
they went. The actuators actually. I don't work. want to run one down and have it go ping <laughs> and stay down and then I'm in real trouble. These tires are three years old. You can actually see you got brand new brakes on the front. The brake pads right out at the edge, mm -hmm. which is a sign of a brand new brake. They didn't squeeze, so it should be fine with that. We'll get a tread depth gauge, measure that stuff. The soil here a customer is going to want to keep an eye on. It might be from changing the oil. They put the oil filter above the power steering rack, and then it's got these ledges that could run oil down and drip off the other side. Mm -hmm. So I would wash it up, recommend the customer just keep an eye on it. It's nothing, it doesn't look like power steering fluid. doesn't smell like power steering fluid, so I'm pretty sure it's just engine oil. It's kind of a funny design where they put that filter right above a bunch of it. I'm sure there's a lot of customers that complained about getting oil drips after oil changes. Yes. That's going to be real common. You are going to need ball joints soon. You can see we start to get rust out of there, the boot's torn wide open. Yep. When we get it down towards the ground, we'll su support the outer part of the control arm so we can unload the pressure on the ball joints and actually feel if there's play in them. Okay. Tie rod ends loose. And there, that feels all tight. You get a real distinct little tick when you got a tie rod end loose. Definitely have some oil leaking around the transmission oil pan. Uh, not uncommon for a little older car for that. So it'd be a good idea to pop the pan off, change the filter, change the fluid. And the oil up on the bell housing is most likely just blowing back from the transmission pan. So mm -hmm. I don't see any oil on the inside here. Mm -hmm. The flywheel torque converter is dry. It looks all dry up there. So. A lot of times oil in this area, you automatically think rear main seal, but you got to look inside to see if oil is coming from the rear main seal or not. Mm -hmm. These lower control arm bushings, if you get a shot from this side, there's age, there's stress marks in there, but they're, um, they haven't come apart yet. Probably be quite a while before they do, but when they do, you'll notice because it'll it'll handle funny driving up the road. See, they're starting to crack. Yeah, you can see they are cracked. A little older car, older rubber. That's just what happens. On U joints, looking for any rust coming out of the U joint cups. If there's rust coming out, that's a sign that they're. They're dry and the needle bearings are going bad. And then he play in the new joint, which these ones look good. A little bit of oil residue around the front pinion seal. It's not dripping. A uh, person could fix it now or could wait until it drips. Looks like the rear cover at some point's been serviced. Normally from the factory, you're not gonna get that much silicone coming out of it, but obviously it's been a while as dirty as this stuff is. So it wouldn't be a bad idea to service the rear diff. I should actually go grab a couple wrenches. 
check that actual fluid. I'm gonna take a look and see what the uh, rear diff fluid looks like. Fluid actually looks pretty clean. So you can see this car has got a solid rear axle, very similar to a light truck, mm -hmm. but then with the um, trailing arm suspension, they can make it really soft. So they, instead of using a big old leaf spring holding it up, they're holding it up with a coil spring and then holding it in place with the arms. So these bushings here look good on this car, but they wear out and they can create driving problems. These tires are made in 2017, the 47th week, so they're not even three years old yet. 47, 17. Yep. So what's the longest you think a tire should run on a vehicle? Well, it depends on what how they're made. Age-wise, 10 years or less. Tread depth's around 7, 30 seconds, so it's not, you want to check across the tire to make sure you don't have an uneven wear. That one's good. This one's just over seven, so you're still in good shape on the tires. I would just rotate them and roll them. The rubber's not old and the tread depth is still good. So you think with those being slightly better tread, those should go on the back of the vehicle? Yeah, I would put them yeah. on the back, but I would just constantly rotate them. On the brakes, we have over eight millimeter brake pad, which is, they're almost new. No worries there. Looking at the color of the brake rotor and stuff, I don't see anything that looks bad. Rears are also well over eight millimeters, so there's nothing to worry about there. And you got good brakes on this car. There's a little bit of residual rust, which is nothing alarming. That's that's normal being around the water and hot metal parts. Mm -hmm. Now, if the brake brake pads are down to two millimeter, there's there's nothing left on them. It's time to get them changed out. Hey Derek, you want to just finish rotating these? So your overall opinion on the car? We'll finish checking the ball joints, but otherwise I think it'd be a solid car. There's a lot of life left in this car. All right, if you appreciated the video today, consider giving us a thumbs up and leave a comment below and use hashtag the homework guy. For those of you who want to thank us for our efforts with the tip, you'll find the PayPal and Cash App links down below. Don't forget to join us on Facebook and Twitter as well to make sure you never miss a thing. That's it for now. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care, everyone.